my channel. If you're new here, my name is Danny, and this is Coffee Break with Danny, where this dress is holding on to dear life with a lot of tape. Thanks, Amazon. If you guys found this channel, it's probably because y'all are excessive users of your Amazon Prime privileges, and that's okay, because I'm that, I'm that person too. I'm that person too, and that is how this list gets this long every time I do this video. Y'all, the list is like ongoing. I find something and I add it to the list and I think there's already like four or five other Amazon videos on my channel. They are extremely popular on YouTube. I don't wanna play it out, but I also watch them myself and buy stuff from those recommendations. April Athena is one of the culprits as to why I continue to shop excessively on Amazon and I have no regrets. Anyway, let's get into it. I have a list on my phone. I'm gonna go in and out of order, whatever. You know, usually I'm like cute about it and I'm like, let's do bathroom stuff and then kitchen stuff and then fashion. No, I'm like, rah, rah. I'm just gonna throw it out there at you guys. All right, so let's get to the thing that has made us come closer as a family. I found the games Guess in 10 I don't even remember how. It was on a whim on Amazon. I was looking for games to buy for some reason. Parker's daughters really enjoy playing board games and I wanted to find something that all of us could play. But when you have five-year-olds to 16-year-olds, it's really difficult to find a game that is not super, super basic or super, super complicated. So the Ga Guess in 10 series is really fun because not only is it an educational learning toy, but it is also entertaining for people of all ages. I mean, Parker and I have a blast every time we do it. And so Guess in 10 is divided into subcategories. They have major cities, they have states, they have animals, they have professions, they have places around town. I mean, we have like eight of them already. Pretty sure there's only eight of them. And so it's one of those where you divide into groups. You can have as many people in your group, as little, it, it could be one-on-one, -on -one, it could be three, you know. Divide yourselves however you want and each team gets a card and the card lists, for example, an animal. And so that animal will be like, I don't know, zebra. And the other team gets 10 yes or no questions that they can ask. They can ask, is this an animal of the safari? Is this an animal with hooves? Is this an animal with a pattern on their fur or whatever? And you get 10 yes or no questions. And it's really fun because every person in the family can participate. It doesn't matter how old they are, every person in the family can participate. But the best part about it is you're accidentally learning as you're playing this game. Like, I know so many countries in Africa now that I didn't know before. I know so much about sports and which ones are in the Olympics that I didn't know before. So you're learning as you're having fun and you're not realizing that you're playing a learning game. It's really cool. Let's talk about toy storage. So I have been trying to purge out my boys things. They're in that age where they're, they're not babies anymore, but they're also not tweens yet. And so they still like toys, but they also prefer their Nintendo Switch and their iPad more than actual toys. So we're drowning in toys right now and I'm trying to figure out a way to simplify their toys. So we went on a rampage the other day and we purged out tons and tons and tons of toys. And I said, hey, I'm gonna get you something that is gonna go on the foot of your bed and that's gonna be where you keep all your toys. It can be full to the brim, it does not need to be organized, you can put whatever you want in there, but that's gonna be where you keep your toys. Instead of all those little bins, like preschool looking bins that I had in the TV room. So I got them these really awesome ottomans. They look elegant, they look classy, they blend into their decor, and no one needs to know that they're really just hiding a crap ton of toys. Now it's really cool too because these ottomans are collapsible, so they're sturdy enough to hold you sitting on them and putting your shoes on, but they're also foldable and you can put them away in a long, skinny, flat, rectangular shape. So they're really, really cool. So if they decide at some point, hey, I don't want the ottoman anymore, we can collapse it, put it away, or move it easily, store it somewhere. And I love the fact that it comes in really beautiful neutrals that blend into their room decor already. So I thought these were a super winner. Keeping in the talk or the conversation of bedrooms. So my mom came to visit a couple of months ago and I was kind of nervous because I didn't have my guest bedroom set anymore and I had no place to put her. And I was like, what am I gonna do? I am that type of person that would rather be 10 times a million, gajillion more times uncomfortable than her guests. 
I would hate to ask my guests to sleep on the couch. That's just me, that's how I was raised, and that's just something that's super important. So I was freaking out because I was like, where am I gonna put my mom? Like, I can't have her sleep on a couch or the love sack. I went on Amazon, I did a ton of research. I wanted to find something that had real reviews, like true, honest reviews, but something that also wasn't gonna break the bank. So I found a bed frame in the same type of decor that I like and a mattress I think for under $400, I wanna say. I don't remember exactly how much I paid, but I was like, holy crap, I can't believe this is what I got away with. So the bed frame is absolutely delicious. It is stunning. It all comes tucked into the headboard. So the side pieces, the foot of the bed, everything, the beams, the cross beams, all of it comes tucked into the headboard in a box ship to your doorstep. You don't have to pay for shipping. You don't have to go to a fancy furniture store. You don't have to risk, you know, shopping with a mask on and not finding something you like and then waiting for it to be delivered or having to borrow someone's truck. The bed frame is absolutely stunning. I loved it. It's far beyond exceeded my expectations. But what really impressed me was a mattress in a box that did not break the bank because I'm used to buying, like my mattress, my personal mattress is a Casper. Don't regret buying it, loved it, still love it. It's awesome, but it was maybe $800. I wasn't gonna spend $800 for the three nights that my mom was gonna stay with us, you know? So I got this mattress in a box from Amazon. Y'all, it is amazing. It is on the firmer side, but it is a foam mattress. So it doesn't matter how it doesn't matter how firm it is, it's still a foam mattress. So it's never gonna be like a concrete slab. You know what I mean? So anyway, I was like, I need to tell my pandas about this because so many of us need new furniture but don't have thousands of dollars laying around to invest in a new bed or a bed frame. But that doesn't mean that we have to get something cheap or ugly that we don't like. It's important to be able to get something that makes us happy and not break the bank. Kind of like what I was telling you guys about my wedding dress. It was $59, it made me super happy, and no one said that a wedding dress had to be thousands of dollars. Same thing for furniture. Nobody said furniture has to be thousands of dollars. Okay, you guys, since we're already on the subject, let's talk about couch Velcro. I'm not gonna get into too much detail about it because I talked about it in a weekend vlog. I even showed you guys how to apply it. My son, my eight-year-old, loved to tuck his little feet and elbows and arms and everything into couch cushions and push them out. And so my couches would really trigger me and make me so anxious because they were always sloppy. Well, Sam, my best friend, shows up to save the day and she's like, dude, couch Velcro. I'm like, wait, what? What is couch Velcro? Well, couch Velcro is industrial grade Velcro, thick slabs or strips of Velcro that you cut to the size of your cushions and you stick your couch cushions down. It is washable. I have tried washing it and it does work. Just make sure that you stick the soft side of the Velcro onto the couch cushion, not the rough part. The rough part has to be on the actual sofa structure itself. <laughs> Pro tip. It is brilliant. It is the most brilliant invention. It's basically like fixing something with duct tape. Like you would have never thought about it. So Velcro for your couch cushions and it gives you such a peace of mind. You guys, all of my couches now are like perfect all the time. They're just always, always perfect. The, the cushions don't move. They don't go anywhere. And a lot of you guys commented, were like, well, I like to vacuum underneath my cushions. Like my kids drop a lot of crumbs. You can still do that. You just go, you rip the Velcro off and then you put the Velcro back. It's super easy to use. Just like Velcro on shoes, just like Velcro on jackets or whatever. Same concept. Last weekend when I did a vlog for you guys, I think there was a shot where I'm sitting in the living room and a lot of you cut something that I didn't know I hadn't shared with you guys before. So I think I was vlogging like this and behind me was a blanket ladder and you guys were like, I don't care what you're talking about right now. I need to know where that blanket ladder is from. And I was like, oh, from Amazon, duh. So I've tried to find a blanket ladder that not only doesn't slip on hardwood floors, but also matches the decor of my house, which tends to be neutrals, gray, light turquoise, stuff like that beiges and also isn't rough so a lot of these blanket ladders are a little rough and so it snags your blanket or it's hard to put the blankets back on and again i have kids varying in ages from 5 to 16 and they're not going to put in the trouble of like lifting a blanket and like laying it carefully and they just want to tuck it in fast or pull it out fast you know what i mean so this one is from amazon it didn't break the bank i do have to say though disclaimer it was a 
to assemble. It's one of those screws like from Ikea where you need an Allen wrench and you screw it in and you hear it carving the wood as you're rotating it in, but the screws are this long. So your blanket ladder is never gonna break, but it takes you a very long time to get the screws in and it's all the way down and it's like four, I think you have to do it eight times, eight or 10 times. So I was at, man, you guys, my hand was sore the next day but also I can't hang, so. <laughs> I'm not a reliable witness here. <laughs> Let's move into the kitchen. I never promised this video would be entertaining. I promised it would be useful. Moving into the kitchen, a lot of you guys comment on how I make my manicures last. If you guys watch my Instagram or my stories, I always have, generally speaking, I always have nail polish on my hands. If you go back to last week's video, I didn't have nail polish, but there's we started distance learning and there's a story, okay? <laughs> but usually I do my nails every Thursday and so my polish lasts seamlessly seven to 10 days where I don't have to retouch it, it lasts forever. And you guys are like, well, what's your secret? What base coat do you use? What top coat do you use? And while those things do matter, what really matters is dish gloves. I do a lot of dishes. I clean the kitchen every day and it's so important for me to protect my hands. My hands are something that show my age immediately. If my skin is dry, if I'm stressed, if my anemia is back, my hands sell me out real quick. So I try to protect my hands as much as I can. You guys can tell they're not very forgiving. And so dish gloves for me are a must. So if you want your manicure, by the way, how cute is this color? If you want your manicure to last, dish gloves are a must. But for me, dish gloves are disposable and I'm not gonna spend a lot of money getting dish gloves that are really awesome. Well, I found this two pack on Amazon. I think they're $11, maybe 12 for two. I thought it was pretty expensive, but when I saw how they work and how amazing they are and how long they last, I was like, I'm sorry I ever doubted your love. Like. Plus the colors are fun. It's a two pack, it comes with purple and turquoise, bright purple, bright turquoise. The inside is lined with like a felt. It feels like this soft velvety felt. You know what it feels like? Do you guys remember those itty bitty tiny animals? You would buy like the little house and their little cars and their little, they're like, they're like soft, furry and felty on the outside. That's what the inside of the gloves feels like. The gloves last forever. They're not those gloves that tear easily and they're a little bit longer than typical gloves. So they do not, it's a lot harder to get water in there. Once I get water inside my glove, I throw the gloves away. Cause there's no way that I'm gonna sanitize that. You just can't. There's no way to dry it properly. There's no way to sanitize it properly. Like your gloves are dead. So you might as well throw them away or your hands are gonna smell really rank. These dish gloves are brilliant, you guys. I, I don't wanna spend too much time talking about dish gloves because they're dish gloves, but you need them. Another kitchen gadget that I really like is a clip on pasta drain tool. Now I'm not a fan of gadgets. I like to have two knives that I use. I have like one, what's going on over here? I have like one favorite wooden spatula that I like. I have one favorite wooden spoon that I like. Like I'm very minimal when it comes to kitchen tools because the ones that I have are my favorites. I use them, I love them, they never disappoint me. But when it comes to things like an electric can opener and this and that, I try not to have a ton of gadgets. This is a gadget and I like it. It is basically a silicone drainer. It's a half moon shape. You clip it to the sides of a pot and you dump it over the sink. Now, this is convenient if you're going to heat your sauce in that same pot. This is convenient if you want to blend stuff together without soiling a colander and then putting stuff back or you're using another pot. Like if you're gonna do that same pot for everything, then it's convenient to have the clip on colander. If you're not, then you're just it's just another thing that you're dirtying, you know what I mean? But ultimately, it's also dishwasher safe, so it's pretty handy. If you guys saw um, a weekend vlog of ours where Parker was pretending to be a bartender, he actually broke my lemon juicer. And this lemon juicer is from Mexico. It's one of those artisanal tools that you could buy at just any random market. Super old, I'm pretty sure I took it from my parents' house when I moved out, and it broke in half. And I just never replaced it, just out of principle. I was like, well, it's you don't need a tool to squeeze a lemon. The only tool you need is this one. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, I needed a tool. So 
<laughs> One of my favorite tool brands, believe it or not, is OXO. O-X-O, I think it is. It's very affordable. I'm very happy with their tools. I think they rival Calphalon, and Calphalon's like my bratty, snooty, bougie brand that I love. So OXO usually has my back, and they didn't let me down this time. I got a juicer from OXO. It's bright yellow. It's easy to find. Uh, bonus Baby Senior loves using it. She loves to make fresh lemonade, and so I felt kind of like, you know, I need to get a juicer if it's something we use often. It's easy to justify a gadget when the gadget gets used a lot. It's hard to justify a gadget that you use randomly, maybe twice a year. You know what I mean? Like a cherry pitter. Why do I need a cherry pitter? I don't know, but I have one. <laughs> Last kitchen gadget. I'm going to need you guys to get your voting hands ready. Hands up if the ketchup goes in the refrigerator. Hands up if the maple syrup goes in the refrigerator. Hands up if your Vicks Vapor Rub goes in the refrigerator. Some of you do that. I just learned that hack doing a live on Instagram the other day. I haven't tried it, but I'm pretty sure I'm gonna. Hands up if your butter goes in the refrigerator. I actually leave my butter on the counter. Like I leave my butter straight up on the counter, just out on the counter, just to fend for itself. Well, I've been in Texas for almost 10 years and I didn't know that in the South there's this thing called a butter bell. A butter bell is this amazing ceramic contraption that is like a little cup and then it's an upside down bell. Well, I guess it's not upside down. It's like a round thing with like a bell attached to it and you pull it out and turn it upside down and it's full of butter. So you leave your butter to soften at room temperature and then you shove it into the bell and you store it upside down in this container and it doesn't absorb the smells of the kitchen. I hate cold butter. Cold butter is, it should be illegal. Cold butter ruins your toast. Cold butter ruins pancakes. Cold butter is the worst. Soft butter is where it's at. And so I always kept my butter on the kitchen counter, like just out on a plate in the kitchen counter or like a little pot, but I cook a ton. And so all of the kitchen smells would get absorbed into the fat because that's what it does. And so I didn't know this little contraption existed. And now I have soft butter all the time and it doesn't absorb any of the kitchen smells. You're welcome. All right, you guys, let's do a few more and then we'll be done for the day. This stuff, has become really handy since we are doing distance learning here at home. So I have two boys that I am having to help guide along throughout their day, when to log into Zoom, when to turn in their worksheets, how to submit things in Google Classroom. Y'all, it's like I'm in school again, except this time I'm in kindergarten and third grade. So my little guy is struggling because he's little. And for the first time in my life, I can understand why kindergarten classrooms are so freaking cute, why tables are so freaking little, why chairs are so little, why their toilets are low, you know? Like for the first time, it made sense to me why Everything is so cute and little. And so he's struggling so much finding a chair that's at the right height for him, like being actually in frame when he's zooming on his iPad. We have struggled so hard. So I had to buy him sort of like this stand. The stand is supposed to be for, for cookbooks, but it's also a stand that could be used for an iPad. And I needed a stand that didn't tilt because I don't need him to do this on his Zoom, right? Don't look at my gray hairs. I need him to do this on his zoom. He needs to be like straight up 90 degree angle, right? 45 degree angle, 90 degree. You know what I'm saying? I need it to be vertically <laughs> vertical. And so I found the perfect bamboo stand that once he's done using it, I could use it for books. I could use it for my laptop. So it's a really wonderful stand because it goes all the way down to a really almost laying down position to a straight up and down position. So he's right there, right in the middle of his zoom, perfect in view and gets to see everything and doesn't miss a beat. So it's absolutely wonderful. And I think it was like $10. I'm like, what? When I put that in my cart, it was like, you might enjoy this. I was like, first of all, Truman Show, you need to stop spying on me. How do you know I need it? Adds to cart. <laughs> this is a bamboo carousel that's designed for remotes, um, paint brushes. The way they marketed it, marketed it was for TV remotes, for school supplies, or for painting. And so they have several pictures of, of 
of how you can do it. I just did my sons with his pencils, his crayons, scissors, eraser, you know, just basic school supplies. So it's at reach for him. And when he can't reach the ones in the back, he just gives it a little spinny spin and it comes to the front. So it makes him a little more independent. Anyway, the reason I wanted to include him here is because so many of us are doing distance learning right now and it doesn't make sense to spend too much money on something that you're only gonna use temporarily. So if it's something that will help your kids now, but that you could use again for a different purpose, why not, right? So that carousel is always gonna be convenient, whether it's for toiletries, uh, beauty products, makeup brushes. I don't know, maybe like my bonus daughter wants her own makeup brushes and she's gonna need her little carousel. So it's it's a very multi-purpose thing. The stand can be used again for cookbooks, for my laptop, or um, I don't know, if they're playing Minecraft or whatever kids are doing, Ro Roblox these days, you know what I'm saying. Okay, you guys, let's talk about a few techie things. So I wanted to do something that was um, kind of like a three in one or four in one stand for charging things because these days, although we have technology to make our lives easier, we have 43 different chargers for each thing and it can become a little daunting, overwhelming, stressful, or just plain ugly. I have a charging station for my kids' iPads and switches and I've shown that to you before in a previous Amazon favorite. Well, anyway, on our nightstand, Parker and I both have AirPods, EarPods, AirPods, wireless earbuds. Uh, we both have iPhones and we both have Apple watches and those are three separate chargers. Well, we found a unit that actually can do all three at the same time and it's not gaudy, it's not awful, it's not ugly, it's not super techy looking. It's very simple, clean cut lines, no weird ad on it and it is a wireless charger so it's also very handy. I thought it was very useful and it also comes in black, I believe. We have ours in white and it charges your watch, your phone and your um, wireless earbuds at the same time. So it's super, super handy. Keeping up with the theme of tech, I have this little um, lighter charger that I have in the car. Now, with newer cars these days, you can't connect something or you can't Bluetooth something without everyone else hearing it. And it tends to become annoying, especially if all you wanna do is charge your phone. So oftentimes when we're using my vehicle and say bonus baby wants to charge her phone, I don't want her to connect her phone and then it's up on the, um, uh, what is that called? CarPlay. It's up on CarPlay and we can all see who's texting her and all that stuff or it connects to her music. You know, all she wants to do is charge her phone. So let's let her do that. I found this cool little adapter for the lighting port uh, where the lighter thing is in the car. I don't know why I'm doing this. <laughs> for the lighter port. So it's just this little nub thing. You stick it into the lighter port and it has two USB ports. So anything that's USB, you can now charge in your car without it playing over CarPlay, Apple CarPlay, which is, you know, it's handy and convenient if you're the driver, but everyone else are like, I just want to charge my <laughs> yo, you know? <laughs> so I was like, I think it was $7 or $8 or something super affordable and I can charge my camera, you know, someone can charge their watch or uh, their iPad or whatever, their, their switch, anything that's USB compatible, you have instantly two charging ports now just in that little hole, in that little port. Okay, you guys, two more things and we're done because I'm getting way too ahead of myself. This video is gonna be like an hour long. This thing is so silly. It was $5 for a two pack, but I was trying to figure out a way to have a place for my purse in the car without it being in my lap. I have the nasty habit of driving with my purse in my lap or in the passenger seat. And in the passenger seat, it's inconvenient if someone's with me. And in my lap, it's never a good idea. So I found these $5 hooks. It's $5 for a two pack and the hook goes into the headrest. Now you can face it backwards you can face it forward. I face mine forward, but if you face it backwards, it's a lot more convenient. But I have two kids in car seats in the back, so they're like really close to my purse, and I don't need them going through there and eating all my gum. You know what I'm saying? This is a super easy, basic contraption. All it does is slide into the bar of your headrest, and then you have an instant hook. And the hook isn't long enough where it touches your neck. It's long enough to be a hook, but it's short enough where it doesn't stab you in the back of your head or it doesn't stick out from the back. It is genius. You guys, five bucks for a two pack. <laughs> and it comes in two different colors. <laughs> and the last thing, you guys, it's been almost a year since I had my explant surgery. For those of you that are new here, I used to have big fake boobs. Almost 
almost a year ago I had explant surgery where I had the implants removed and the capsule around it. It's taken me a very long time to get used to my new bust size, which you guys can tell is a magnificent non-existent size. <laughs> Every three or four months, my bra size changes because I'm getting used to my new cup size, or rather my body is still healing. And so I'm absorbing fat, gaining weight, I'm losing weight because of quarantine, stuff like that. And so my cup size, or rather my bra size is changing. My band size never changed. I'm a 30, which is very hard to find a band size for a 30. And so after three different seasons of trying different styles of bras and liking them, but then eventually realizing they don't work for me anymore, I just got to the point where I was like, you know what? I don't need to wear a bra. I know, whoa, slow down. Don't call the press. Right, let me finish, <laughs> let me explain. My mom is probably so mortified right now, but I was like, I don't have so much breast tissue that I need to shove this in a bra. It just, it feels like they're in prison, right? But I also don't wanna be that person that's like, free the nipple, look, everyone look at my nipples, look, they're on display, I'm gonna wear a sheer shirt and I'm gonna post it on Instagram and I'm gonna be like, this is women empowerment. I'm not that person. If you are, that's amazing, I don't care. Like, more power to you and your choices, you know? If they don't hurt anybody, I don't care, but I'm not that person. So, I don't want people to see my nipples, and so I wanted to find something where I would still be seamless, I still wouldn't get like the bra lines or the whatever I'm using lines. I wanted it to be seamless. I wanted it to be something that I could wear with t-shirts and I didn't want it to be wasteful like stickers, like nipple stickers, um, pasties. I didn't want it to be pasties where it's one use, you peel them off, they hurt as heck and then you just you throw them away. I wanted them to be reusable. So I found nippies and nippies are genius. I've had these for about six months one pair, the same pair, I haven't washed them, and they're still sticky. Obviously, I would wanna be like, here you go, let me show you, but that just be weird. They come in two different sizes and in like three or four different skin tones. They are awesome. You have to apply them very specifically for them to work the way they're supposed to. So it's basically a little shell. It's like a round little shell, and the outside is matte, the underside is sticky. So when you're going to put them on, you need to reverse them backwards, inside out. And then with the sticky side facing out, concaved outward, with the sticky side, you put it on the center of your nipple and then slowly from the middle out, push it down. You push out all the air bubbles and it stays on all day long. As long as you create a seal and you spread it out evenly from the center out, it will stay on all day. Now you can't wear lotion in that area and I wouldn't put perfume or anything on in that area. I mean, mine have lasted like six months and I haven't needed to replace them. They do have the same style in non-adhesive, so they're like bra inserts, which are also pretty handy. But these, like right now, I'm wearing this low cut, super cute summer dress, which is also from Amazon, by the way. And I don't have to worry about bra sh straps showing or anything peeking through, so. They are super handy. I think as women in our fashion repertoire, we should all have suitable alternatives for bras. So not all fashion is conducive to wearing a bra. Not all backs are styled for bra straps. You know, not all br strapless bras are comfortable. Not all race back, racer back bras are comfortable. Clear straps to me, just don't wear a bra at that point. You know, if you're gonna wear clear straps, just don't wear a bra. And so these are like, they're awesome, they're so blendy. And speaking about like physical features, not everyone has nipples that are the same color as their skin tone, you know? Not everyone is blendy. So it does do a really good job at covering up and making everything blendy and camouflage and disappear. So if you guys are like me and you're like, you know what? I'm gonna burn all my bras because none of them fit properly and I'm just getting really frustrated. These nippies, they're winners. Also, I think they're $25 for one or $45 for a two pack. I haven't needed 
to get replacements, which is kind of awesome. But you probably, I mean, if you're gonna wear them every day, you probably wanna have a backup pair. Anyway, that is it for my Amazon recommendations or my Amazon favorites. There are still a ton more on my list, but I didn't wanna make this video so much longer than it needed to be. And in true Danny fashion, I found a way to talk about my boobs in this video. You're welcome. <laughs> All of these products that I mentioned will be listed and linked in the description box of this video, including this dress, which arrived in the mail today. Y'all, this is the house that the Amazon truck stops at every single day, whether because of me or because of Parker, but that truck comes here every day. We're fans. Anyway, I love you guys so much, and you know what to do. If you found this video useful, entertaining, and learned something, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already, and until next time, this coffee break is over. Bye guys.